Holy crap. You are not gonna believe this. Jeez. What's up, guys? MTG Jedi here. Join me in the theater. We have a lot to talk about today, so let's jump right in. Um, nothing of note going on on the free-to-play here. I'm just excited about the champion training. I know you're not, but I definitely am. I need to do more champion training and rank more people up, etc., etc. It's like early game, that's all you need in your life. Just more champion training. So anyway, let's jump right in here. One week of news, and it's been an insane, actual insane week, okay? On Monday, we got dropped the Angar and Fortis buffs are coming, okay? But that's, you know, a little disappointing. Fortis and Angar, mostly the only thing that's changing is a little bit of damage. We don't know for sure, you know, until we see that update in the game, hopefully this week. Um, you know, we're not going to know how impactful that has been. Also, Angar got a minor adjustment to his kit. Like, I don't think it's going to really be enough, but it's possible that that's going to be more impactful than what we think. You know, a possibility for a two-turn provoke. Um, he's going to be able to possibly put decreased attack. A high percentage chance. I don't know. And, like, a damage boost as well. So, like, it's definitely possible that this is impactful. It's definitely possible, but obviously we were expecting more. All right, so then the next day, or I don't even know, that could have been the same day, we got all these notifications that these blessings are changing, and that's huge. Honestly, I'm a huge fan of all of this. It's like they actually listened to some of the things that we said, and we're seeing changes based on that. Now, if we could just, like, get an, get a freaking upgrade to the tavern here, you know, and the market, and discounts on these crazy offers, like, keep going, Plarium, keep going, keep listening, keep working, keep improving, we want to keep playing this game. So, anyway, um, like, on the Dark Resolve, I think that that's okay, we'll see, um, the number of dead allies you don't really want your team to die but like i could see that being useful it's at least interesting okay the emergency heal i think could be super good i think the emergency heal could be super good and i think that that could be really helpful especially in like hydra for survivability you have the faultless defense i mean i don't know how to feel about that one to be honest with you the Heavens cast, um, I love. I actually love, according to the number of buffs on them. Like, that's been my thing in Arena, not in Arena, that, but like, I think it could be good in Arena as well. But that's been my thing for Hydra for a while now that I have found the most interesting is like, building these teams and extending the buffs ever since the whole progni cadaver thing i've kind of been obsessed with that and i think this blessing could be really fitting for teams just like that then you have indomitable spirit which is a combination of all of the bad blessings in one which i like iron will um I don't know like it could be fine if you had like a specialty person for like some of these bosses but at least it has at least it has like a reason then we have lethal dose pretty sure that that's still gonna be bad but you know at least they're trying and then polymorph i literally have no actual clue whether this is gonna help or not it can't hurt I mean, maybe it can, but like, this is in the right direction. We want them to balance Polymorph. Honestly, I wouldn't be upset if they just took it out of the game, like change the blessing altogether and just put Polymorph on specific champions. Like the fact that Sun Wukong can Polymorph someone, it, like balance it off of that. That Polymorph is okay. This Polymorph, I don't know if that's going to be enough, but again, at least they're trying. 
And then we get into this fragment exchange. Jeez, the fragment exchange. Holy crap, this is going to be amazing. I have fragments on the free-to-play. I have a billion fragments on the main account. You're going to be able to get these chests that contain fragments for another champion. So you are trading your fragments for a champion, but it's like, uh, is it really the one that you want? Okay, so there's a cooldown, right? You can uh, open up to 10 fragment chests per week, which leads me to believe that there's going to be one fragment in each chest. Well, let's take a look at the rewards, right? In the chests, uh, you can open, it says fragments. High Mother Mod Fragments. XP Brews, XP Barrels, Chickens, Feasts, Greater Potions, and Books. I mean, all of that sounds great to me. I just... I'm excited to open those chests, actually. Like, that could be the third best chest in the game. I think it'll still... Clan Boss is still the best chest. Hydra's probably second. And then this one, that could be the third best chest in the game. But is this champion like worth your time? Where did where did my picture go? One second. All right, here I found the I found it. It was hiding. She tried to hide from me, guys. She tried to hide from me. If you appreciate this, uh, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button. Um, it really does take me a long time to put these videos together, and trust me, we'll get to what information you clicked on this for. You might still not like me, but we'll get there. Okay. So this champion here. Do I like her? Yes, I do. However, I just worry that she's not really that good. <laughs> I just worry she's not that good. Um, and I, uh, I want to get her on the free-to-play. No possible way. I want to get her on an early game account. No possible way. Right? It's just like, by the time you get her, you probably don't need her anymore. And that's true for a lot of champions in this game. A lot. I want to say a little bit more about her here in a minute. So I will come back to her. But for now, do I think it's worth it to pull these chests? Oh yeah, for sure. Do I think you want to go out of your way to get extra fragments so you can pull these chests? I also think that that's true. But when you get her, it will be determined by, you know, how far along are you on your count, whether she's going to be helpful or not, okay? Like, decrease attack, maybe increase attack on the A1, that's interesting. I like the A2 is sweet, like, decreasing the duration of the enemy buffs, increasing the duration of your buffs, and a heal, all in one ability is very good. But it's just like maybe maybe she's good enough because of that buff extension and the heal and then she also has the revive and then she also has the remove a random uh debuff so maybe i'm like over exaggerating here and she'll be a lot more helpful to people in hydra than what i think i'm definitely gonna try to build some teams around her and probably for hard hydra i don't know let me know what let me know what you want to see from her but we'll come back to her again in a moment next we have the upcoming fusion which yes you should do yes you should definitely do okay um but first let's talk about a, a white okay <laughs> because i feel like there's already some confusion and people don't know what we're talking about with the whites Okay, I, I pulled this from Reddit, so thank you to Drew Fro, Triple Sixes. Whites are generic, intelligent, corporeal undead. Basically, they're weird undead creatures, okay? They are, they like, they have a brain, so it's not like a zombie. It's more like a mummy, which is why you, I mean, like, I don't know. In D&D, &D, which is the main place where I know whites from, um, they tend to be more like sentient zombie undead things, okay? Like, you can see, like, the dudes have, like, weapons and can do magic and stuff. Like, 
it's almost like a ghost, like people who died that were evil, and um, then they like have some task to accomplish in the world before they will let their soul go. You know what I mean? Like that kind of a situation. So I feel like that's fitting for Knight's Rev, but also they could have easily gone into Undead. You know what I mean? But anyway, I feel like, I don't know, I'm the guy to like give you that knowledge. So that's what you come here for, right? Anyway, uh, I put Malkith on here to just have a discussion about him versus the new Fragment Fusion, White Queen and Korra. And Maud, that other Fragment Fusion, because I feel like he's similar to both of them. More similar to Maud. So, like, if you were like, hey, I want Maud, and I uh, think that'd be really cool, just go build yourself a Malkith until you get there. <laughs> right? Like, he can do a decent job of it. And, like, if we just take a brief look at his kit... Uh, I think he's Knight's Rev also. Yes. Like, I would love to get this guy on this free-to-play account. That would be amazing. He can steal a buff, which is rare. And especially on the A1 is very nice. 60%. No, 70% with books. And then he has this the same type of AoE, but more of an epic level. Right? Like, one turn instead of two. No heals. So he's pretty similar to Maud, and then he has the revive with something else on it, which is this shield on a four-turn cooldown. He even has the accuracy aura as well. Obviously, it's faction crypts, but like I like this guy, and I am committed to doing a video on him. I just gotta find time and figure out a good team for him. But like I think like this guy is very comparable. So if you don't want to wait, just go build him. Now, is it going to um is it going to start me back at the beginning? Okay, one second. Since it started me back at the beginning, I mean here's mod, right? You know, like I think that their kits are so similar, but she's a legendary version of him. So if you want those type of effects, you can easily just get yourself a Malkith. You might even have one just like sitting in your vault, or I think he was a fusion epic. But either way, like He'll probably be on some 10x after I make this video, which is sweet. Keep doing that, Plarium. I love when you listen and, uh, you know, like slip stuff in like that. That's nice. All right. So anyway, what about this fusion then? Should you do it? Yes, 100% probably. But I think before we talk about her, we need to talk about him. But I also really do want to talk about her. Because, like, this A1 with the cooldowns is very nice. And then she has the full cleanse and shield, which is really nice. And then she has the revives. Um, so here's the thing. With her passive, I think, is the most important thing, too. Whenever an enemy tries to place these debuffs on the ally with the highest crit damage, so your DPS in Hydra, for example... Or silly shenanigans with Terrace in Arena. Okay, those are two really pertinent examples. When that happens, transfer those debuffs to this champion and fill her turn meter. If she misses her turn, um, what? Fills the champion's turn meter by 50%. If this champion misses their turn due to one of those debuffs. Oh, it's just, okay, yeah, 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 I knew that, I knew that. So basically, uh, if she has to skip her turn, then she gets a turn meter boost, which will get her back around. Like, why not just say, like, removes it at the start of her turn? I mean, that would have been cooler. Okay, at the start of this champion's turn, remove any of those. Just, like, if he's on the team, then, then they do that. It's just, like, I want her to do that on her own, but... Is it, does it have a cooldown? It does. It does have a cooldown. No, it goes, with the books, it goes to a zero turn cooldown. So this could be, like, everybody's new best option for the Fearhead in Hydra. It really could. And I, I think that alone is enough to get her on your account. I do. However, 
I think the next conversation is the reason you clicked on the video here, and I, I promised you we would get here, so let's start that discussion. The White King Narses. Okay, obviously we got some cool Egyptian sort of uh, things going on here with these two champions, which is awesome. I love that. Give me more of that, please. But here's the thing about this kit. We've seen this a number of times and been disappointed a number of times. So what we need is for this guy to have good multipliers. If he does not have good multipliers, he's gonna be a trash champion that goes in the vault that we will all be disappointed with. Now, let's compare him to some other champions when we've been disappointed, okay? Uh, starting off in the top left, we have my dude Fatalis, who... Tomorrow is going to be in a deck of fate as basically a guaranteed champion if you want to pull shards and grind some dungeons. So that is unexpected, and none of us knew about that. Okay, if we knew about that, we would have told you. That was not in the press release. That was not in the plans. We didn't know. Okay, we didn't know. A Lil, same type of kit. Uh, Vitreus. Thea the Tomb Angel, King Garog, the new uh, mythic Sigfrind who I have is very disappointing with the multipliers. And I'm worried about the same thing from Carnage. And last but not least, Xena. Okay, now I put Xena on here on purpose because I know Nub just got her and I find that very interesting. I didn't think a lot of people were going to get her. And he uh, made a video, you know, saying where he thought she would be helpful and interesting. So I'm really looking forward to that, Nub. If you're if you're watching this video, yeah, like uh, we should we should collab about that, or at, at the very least, I'm very interested to see what you do with her because she has multipliers like Kale, like uh, like they're so similar. It's scary. <laughs> I really feel like. Okay, so legendaries are going to have better stats, right? But similar multipliers to rares? It just, it hurts. And King Garog did get a buff for some more damage. But the reason why we don't use any of these champions is because they don't, their kits are based around damage, just like his is, and then they don't do any damage. So I think that it's mandatory. Because at this point, Polarium, as you can see, you have a history of champions who should have multipliers and then are a giant disappointment. And sooner or later, that's going to catch up to you. I think a lot of people were absolutely crushed that their Fatalis Blademaster is a trash bag with a giant sword. He's so bad, okay? And you can tell based on my video on him saying that. So I think that the White King needs, needs, needs to have good multipliers. I feel like it's been a year since we've got an impactful champion with good multipliers, and he needs to have them. He needs to have them. Period. End of story. Put a like and a comment if you agree with that, okay? Now, if he has good multipliers, then all of a sudden, we are talking, okay? This kit is really designed to counter Terrace Marichka in an intelligent and interesting way that will create at least some type of a metagame. Some type of a metagame. Now, I am a little concerned about some other things, which I'll share in a future video, and hopefully these guys will be on a test server that I can test them out, and I'll tell you all that in the video, because we're already getting long here, okay? But basically, this guy has a sweet kit, and with him and her, you have the perfect combination to fight against Terrace Marichka. Can anybody get him? We don't know. We have no idea. They never tell us. How can you get these types of champions? They don't tell us. 
but I'm sure they will give away. If that's a progressive chance event, maybe we should all start saving our void shards. But let me just say this to wrap up the video here, okay? Number one, don't hate me. I, uh, I came through on what I was saying in the thumbnail, so I hope you're not mad at me. I just want to share all of my opinions with you, so don't be mad. Number two, okay, number two. The fusion for the chick, okay? The fusion for the chick. She is worth going for. Period. End of story. Because if you ever get him, you all obviously automatically want to have her. This is Sifi Rodos, Paris Marichka, Venus Cupidus. This is a powerhouse couple. Now, if his multipliers are trash, she's still going to be good and help you with your Hydra stuff. Maybe other places as well, but definitely with that fear head, I feel like she's a good answer. She gives you a reviver in your team as well. I think she is gonna open up some interesting possibilities in Hydra. And like Plarium, keep listening to my suggestions, okay? Uh, more block buffs champions, more decreased speed champions, more provoke champions, more answers to the fear head. I love that you are listening and slipping this stuff in here. Okay. Now, finally, I think that it's an exciting time to be playing raid. Flarium listening to some things, putting out cool content, working on Cursed City. All of that stuff is really, really cool. And make sure that you let me know your thoughts on any of these things in the comments below. And if you're still mad at me, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, let me know about it in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you have a wonderful day. This was a crazy amount of information. But for me, I'm going to go do some champion training on the free-to-play. I will see you guys later. Uh, check out some earlier videos from this week. Uh, YouTube didn't push those out to a lot of people. So if you got time, go check those out as well. And I'll see you later. Thank you.